This conference will now be recorded. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. But the Pledge of Allegiance is for the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, February 20th. Uh, we're in the Rich County Courthouse with the weekly meeting. It's available at go to meetings also. Uh, we have the agenda in front of us. <coughs> and a chance to look at it. I'll move the Motion is our second. I'll second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 the minutes of the February 13th meeting. Anybody have a chance to look at the, any corrections, additions? I'll move to approve the minutes from February 6th. The motion is second. 13th, sorry. I'll second it. Okay, a motion is second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call time. Aye. Martin. Mm -hmm. Aye. Mike. Aye. Sydney. Aye. County Attorney General discussion. Good morning. Um, just uh, I've been corresponding with Jim a little bit. Sounds like the Johnson Control bills is uh, taken yeah. care of, so I'll just leave that off my list. I sent that to the auditor this morning, and so yeah. I'll give that Rachel. Okay. Um, and okay, so I'll take it off my list. Um, gave you an update. Uh, like I sent an update uh, last week about a real estate matter. Um, so um, we'll uh, stay on that. And uh, hopefully by the end of this month, uh, uh, have a little order report. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? Nothing. Okay. Thank good. you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, the sheriff must not be here. Uh, department head discussion. We got some. <clears throat> Conservation board had a regular meeting last week. Uh, that meeting, Lane with the uh, bike trail was there, gave updates on what's going on with the bike trail. Historical Society came and gave us a blueprint of their museum that they're looking at expanding out at the Nature Center area. Uh, so we kind of looked at that. We're moving forward with allowing them to continue to look at building there uh basically long story short they've got our approval to continue the process but <clears throat> we'll get final say in design because we don't want to have anything we want something that's aesthetically pleasing for the area type thing we did have preliminary discussions on them about maybe acquiring the land uh out by primrose i believe it's called baroque area um they're looking at possibly turning that into public hunting and uh moving that over to the county owned type thing so we had discussions on that we did uh, updates on the Bennett Access Easement Agreement. We got a new easement agreement signed with the Osage Conservation Club. Let's see, update on the watershed project as we move forward with getting the engineering done on that. The board reviews fees for our services for the calendar year 2024. The only changes we made were uh, we have now a minimum charge for mowing. Um, we do X amount per acre, but we have a minimum $250 charge and then we updated uh, Cedar Bridge cabin rental from 75 a night to 100 a night type thing. Everything else we're leaving as the same for uh, rentals or uh, camping fees. 
And then we talked about ash cutting in all the parks. So we've been cutting those. That's been a discussion for a couple. Uh, we had regular general director updates, and then we reviewed cabin bids or cabin beds. I'm sorry. So two of our cabins had beds were kind of outdated. Um, so we looked into frames, mattresses, that sort of stuff for the cabin. So we'll be updating the bedding in Cedar Bridge Park and Pinnacle Alders cabin. So we'll be updating those. So that's kind of the big stuff from the conservation board meeting. Any questions? On that, I have a couple. Um, so on uh, <clears throat> that land by Primrose, we they'll keep that tillable. The tillable we stay there, yeah, just the uh, tree area. Tree area. Yeah, we'll keep that. And then um, the parks that you've kind of been doing your trees. Um, I've had a couple of people. Are you just kind of dropping them because of the weather, and then you're going to go back? So we last week we finished up cleanup on all the trees that were dropped. Okay. So all the parks have now been cleaned up. Um, we basically, our hope was that the ground would refreeze when we dropped them the first time, but that's just a weird February. So we ended up tiptoeing around and getting everything cleaned up. Uh, now that that's done this week, we'll be moving to Francis Park and Pioneer Park. And we'll be dropping trees in those two parks and then cleaning them up as we go. But all the uh, Halverson, Interstate, Otrano, uh, and Cedar Bridge, uh, we dropped all those trees that have been all cleaned up. So we just got stumps left to come back and deal with. That's good. Thanks. Yep. So you're going to go back and grind out all the stumps. Right? Yep. We'll go back and grind out all the stumps at a future date. We hope to do it yet this spring, but it's going to be when time allows because right now we just can't get in and do it with the ground the way it is. Free plant some trees on Friday. Yeah, we have 60 trees ordered for this spring that'll go in. Yep. And then next year we'll put in a large group of trees again too. So it's going to be the next couple of years when we put it in. And we're doing a variety of Maple, hackberry, Kentucky coffee, oaks. We're trying to put us a variety in. So if we ever see something like this come through again, it's not like the Dutch elm and the ash type thing where you lose the whole species, you lose the whole park tree. We're trying to make sure we diversify. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah, I got something. Um, Brian um, I wanted to let you guys know that the plaque that I ordered that I told you guys about, um, it's come in. So if you guys would like to peek at that before I deliver it today, so let me know after the meeting. Um, and then I wanted to also let you guys know that I ordered horse postcards. Um, so those are going to be starting to be sent out in waves to the public starting in March. Um, and I'm pretty excited about it. I hope we have more people who test this year. Um, and then I also provided a spreadsheet to Milt Owen. Um, he asked to know kind of what the nitrate levels were looking like in the county um, as for all of last year. So I went through every single water test that we took and um, I made a spreadsheet for him. And um, I wanted to let you guys know that our nitrate levels out of 250 tests that were taken um, are less than 4% failing. Um, which is awesome. So we only had 12 locations out of the entire county out of 250 tests that were a failed um, level during their water test. So nitrate levels are, in my opinion, not 100% a concern. We're still going to keep a look at them and keep track of them, but they're looking pretty good right now. So, so what are the people that have the high nitrate? Do they have to drill them well or what's... Nope, nope, nope. I suggested to every single one of them to put in, um, especially for where their drinking water is, an under-the-counter reverse osmosis system. Um, if they wanted to look further into doing a whole household reverse osmosis system, that would be something that they would have to look into because that gets really costly. Right, yeah. But I told them for their drinking water, they should definitely look into an under-the-counter one. It's a lot more affordable that way. Is there a lot of wells that have to be shocked or not? Or no, not a lot. No, no, I mean, we had to do a couple well shocks last year, um, but I think I only had one last year that needed um, a double shock and then it was taken care of after that. So we're looking pretty good on water tests right now. I'm pretty happy about it. So we'll see what this year brings. I'm excited. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other farmland discussion? I had one that uh, that email that the sheriff sent us on using vehicles for private 
in their private vehicles to go to the pharmacy or the uh, grocery store. I talked to Judy, the insurance lady, and she said that, uh, you know, talk to the sheriff, but as he uh, sent it to us, that if you use your personal vehicle for county business, your personal insurance covers your car if you get in an accident. Unless you get hurt, broken leg, or arm or something, then it falls under workman's comp claim. So yeah. now I've got that. Personal insurance covers your car if you get hurt. And there's another unless. Unless you go to a meeting at night. And so if I go to a meeting in Osage and go to St. Ansgar, visit a mother or city limits or whatever, and then get in an accident on the way home, direct route home from your meeting. Okay. So that kind of makes sense. Yeah. So that's the follow-up on insurance. Okay. Or personal vehicles. Thanks. And some counties even require proof of insurance. Well, you're supposed to have proof of insurance anyway, but proof of insurance to use your car for a county business. Mm -hmm. But that's a law anyway, I believe, to personal insurance. So that's I'll go with the sheriff since he asked about it. Perfect. Thank you. So, uh, county engineer update. Rich is on, not online, I think. I don't, uh, no, I don't see him. No. Okay. Uh, approve. Approve treasures new hire. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Well, we had some good applicants. Um, we had seven applications, which is pretty good for this time of the year. We're going to do three. Um, we are hiring Nora Blocker, Nora, um, as the clerk. She currently works PRN for the sheriff's office, so the background check was good there. Um, she will start on February 26th, which is next Monday, and pay rate will be $18 an hour. Status will be full-time 40 she will be eligible for the raise in July. And then um, in my office, when they take all the training with the DOT and become drive test examiners, which go out and do the route, um, they get a 50 cent hour raise. So that's all on the table as well. Okay. She will, should be a clerk, not a deputy, but be a clerk. She should be a clerk. Okay. I, was hired, I hired a clerk. I already have the two deputies, so okay. and the clerk position open. So. And she is bilingual, so that will be a great asset, asset for the courthouse. Yeah. We do have a lot. Of, we have translator on our phone, and a lot of individuals that don't have English as their first language have translators on their phone, but some stuff gets lost. And that's what would be really nice to have a person that can translate in our office, because we do have a lot of individuals that come in that do not, do not speak English very well. So. Very good. Okay. Uh, discuss possible action. Yeah, that that. Yeah, action on that. Oh, we need a motion for a new hire. Yeah. Got a motion. I move to approve Nora. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Nora Blocker. Is that what the photo was? She has a hash. I don't know what the second part of the hash is. She's married now. Can you uh, put it in minutes accordingly? For what it is? Well, it, she just has on here actually. Nora Blocker. So okay. okay. I'll move to approve Nora Blocker as uh, the new hire for the as a clerk to the treasurer's office. A motion is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Motion second. Any discussion? Roll call, Jim. Aye. Sydney. Aye. 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 question? No. Okay. I, no. Out of the corner of my eye, I didn't know. Oh, no. Hand up. Okay. No. Just be fidgeting around. Okay. Uh, discussing possible action on county-owned property by Carpenter Sewer Lagoons for, for City of Carpenter. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We need a place to put tree branches and roots. Okay. And the only spot that we found is right by the sewer lagoon. That works. There's an adequate site there to put yeah, the others. There's plenty of room. Okay. And it's close to town, so you're not driving down the highway, but 
Ondanks valt het maar. Oké. Ja, I see there's a fence there to go into that. Yeah, so we'll have to put your driveway in. Got to put a driveway in, and it is low. There's water standing right now. Yep. And once it goes in, you can always add more dirt and go back further, I guess. Are you asking? Put a gate in and lock it so you're not getting all the garbage, garbage. Yeah. Are you thinking of putting a driveway in, or do you want? Us or did we do I know that? you mentioned once about getting the driveway put yep. in there easy enough, so that's what, what I'm looking for anyway. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have, are you saying we're gonna have secondary roads to do it then? Is that what you're indicating? If that's possible, because it probably doesn't need a culvert. There's, <clears throat> there's a driveway for the lagoons up a ways, and that's the top of the hill, and it's it just not too many feet that would hold that water. If but if well, Richard look at it first, yeah, the seal would be looked at. And I can't, I'm not familiar with the site in my head. Is it, is it close enough that uh, can tie it right into the dry driveway right now? It's no, not, it's, it's, it's not quite going to the south. I don't know if you've been out there. But I have, but I have paid attention. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. so I, I want to ask a question before I, um, is it that driveway, existing driveway, that's on the north side of, as you're coming down that gravel road? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then you, where's the brush pile going to go? Down in that triangle? Yeah, in the triangle on the south side. Okay, so that's where that driveway be. Yeah. I want to see that where it's... Um, it, it's okay. I just, I just want to make sure that we don't have... Uh, it depends on how deep the ditch is as far as how big of a culvert we can put in there. And, and if, it's, if there isn't much, if, it, if it's fairly close to the dry driveway, we probably get by with a 12 inch or maybe even I said we're cheap, but actually get a smaller dual wall to go in there. But I don't really want to get hold of back water either. I guess that's a big thing. Right. I don't know how far it is. I don't want to have a pond of water sitting there. So right. yeah. Let Rich can make that call for you. Yeah. 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 And then what would be, um, as the brush pile gets big, are you going to burn it? or? That's what I said. And then... Jim said maybe DNR might not let you. I haven't talked to DNR on that part. Yet. They they were kind of nervous sometimes when we do brush cutting and they uh, didn't want us hauling it longer distances and burning it in a different location. This is at one time. They were okay if we kind of pushed it up in the area that we were cutting and burned it there. So you just might want to check and see if right. they're okay with doing that. If, yep. if you can't burn it, like up to conservation, sometimes they'll have an excavator or those are coming once a year and just get on top of the pile, crush it every year, and it ends up turning into mulch after. Right. And, and you're not going to be putting that no. much out no. there. So, yeah. They're deep enough hole, it would take a long time to fill that part in anyway. Yeah, there's ways to make it all work. So, yeah. Stacy? I know Stacy has one out of there, so they're willing to do it. They do burn it, I think. Okay. Maybe. Have an inch of snow or something or something, you know, then they'll burn. That's why I thought doing it in the wintertime when you're not, then there's no houses close by that it affects anything there. Yeah. I mean, I'm good with it. I just didn't like the yard all of a sudden coming back. Right. The door. <laughs> That's all I'm looking at. So, okay. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to approve that. Okay. The motion is there a second? I'll second that. The motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, Todd. Aye. Jim? Aye. Sydney? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, discussion, <clears throat> excuse me, possible action on planning and zoning commission member. I just said, how many do you have now, Amanda? Five. Five. Five on our board. And so I think last week we were just kind of want to make sure that it's uh, the board approves that we have five. Is that kind of what we're looking at doing? Right. Just to make it official? Mm -hmm. yeah. But it used to be six, so, right? Yeah, so a very, very, very long time ago when the commission was first started in like 1970-something. I don't, I don't want to throw out a year. I don't yeah. want to be... 100% on that. Um, there was seven. And then someone 
randomly dropped off. I haven't done the research on when, but they just dropped off. And then that's how it went to six. Um, so that seventh position never got filled. And then it's been six for a while. Um, and then we had someone drop off. Um, I feel like it would be just better to have the five because then when it comes to a quorum, um, that odd number kind of is, I think it's a lot easier when it comes to a quorum. Um, if, if you had six, you'd have a quorum easier because either way you need three. So actually you would need four for a quorum mm -hmm. on six because it would? needs to be the majority. Yeah. I thought it just had to be half. Well, you need to have the majority. So, yeah. Are you are you are you good with five? You think I'm five good with five. Good? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm good with five. I think the five that I have right now, I think they mesh really well. I think they all have open minds when it comes to everything. Um, I don't know. I'm not opposed to I guess adding one more, but if we add one more, I'd want to add two more at that point. So, um, I guess. I, I'm good with the five of okay. I have. I think they're all great individuals. Yeah. That email that the other counties are all over, mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, so it isn't like it's mm -hmm. everybody's at five or seven. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, like Clayton, they've got eleven. So yeah. and she questioned why that eleven. Though. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, it's really just dependent on the county. But again, I think the five that we have. I think they're they're good individuals. So they're good. I'll move to make a motion that you stay with the five that she has. I don't know how you want to word that. Or just go with five, right? That we need to go with five. Planning and zoning commission members. Second. A motion and second. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Roll call, Mark. Hi. Mike. Hi. Sydney. Hi. Yeah. Discussion with North Isle Juvenile Detention Service Director. Sam Hudson, he's the director for North Isle Juvenile. They sent out an email in regards to the director wanting to talk to all the member counties for North Isle Juvenile Detention. So we lined it up so that he's here to talk today. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I want to talk to everybody just for the simple fact that we have our board members, but not everybody on the board knows exactly what we're doing. So I wanted to make sure that everybody gets on the same page. Uh, with me, I've been the director for about five years now. I've been with the company for 28 years. So I've seen it become a 31 bed detention center to multi, multiple different programs. In this pro in, in our detention now, so we have a detention center, we have an adult crisis stabilization center, we have a subacute for adults, and just this past June we opened what they call Brownstone Youth Services, which is a crisis center for kids that have mental health issues. So we've kind of went a lot toward mental health and detention. That's that's our main focus for for uh North. It's called North Iowa Regional Services now. Just Detention is one of the programs underneath it. Um, with that being said, we're, we're, like I said, we went from 31 beds to 15 beds. So, and it's with detention these days, nine detention centers and every last one of them are full. You call any of them, they're all full. And a lot, a lot of us do because it's hard to place kids these days, you know, especially with girls, you, you, place them out of state a lot of times and you can't find places out of state that want to take them either. So they get stuck in our detention centers and a lot of kids right now are getting stuck in our detention centers. So that's why it's so hard. Uh, I know you guys are a part of Central Iowa as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's money wise and I totally understand that this is your county. You have to budget for your county and make sure that everything lines up for your budget and stuff like that. Uh, I was looking at our budget and realized that I looked at how much has Mitchell County been in North Iowa. Well, you haven't been in there at all this year. So there's no, there's zero kids from Mitchell County that's come from, which is a good thing and a bad thing, you know, uh, because money is what, what runs the detention center. If we don't have money coming from our counties, our member counties, then it's hard to budget every year. 
So, but also means that kids are not getting in trouble either, which is a, a great thing for the counties. Um, so we're, we, I want to make sure that everybody understands that we are here for you. I, I'm one of the directors just focuses on my member counties. I don't focus on what Polk County is doing, what other counties are doing for their kids. I don't, a lot of times I don't, I don't like taking their kids because I want to save room for the, our member county. So I will always have beds for anybody because in our 28E agreement, every member county has at least one bed. Some of them have more than one, depends on like Blackhawk County. They, we're right there with them, so they have probably about six to seven beds. But if they're over their limit and you guys need a kid, need a bed, we move their kid to put you in there. So and that goes with every member. Um, I know Central Iowa they have um, like 50 beds, I think. I don't, I don't know how many how many. It's something like that. So I'm not trying to compete with Central Iowa. That's too big. You know, we're you come up 50 to 15. You know, if I'm going to compete, I'm going to compete with smaller detention centers, and, and we do have three of them uh, that's in the state out of nine that have about 15 to 20 beds. But like I said, we're all staying full right now. I'm averaging out of 15 beds, I'm averaging 14 kids a day, and it's hard to you get a call just about every other day about bringing in a kid in detention. So everybody's moving kids around. So don't think it's a a small detention center that's struggling or it's a or big detention center struggle. It's everybody that's, you know, you know, one one thing I say is like the state training school, they used to house about two hundred some kids a day. Now they're probably down to about fifty kids a day. Well, where's the other two hundred at? They're in our detention centers. So this is why everybody's staying full and we're calling POs and trying to get people moved and get people in and out as quick as possible. But you know, you gotta look at the safety for the community as well. You know, so we're just trying to make sure that everybody understands that what's really what's actually really going on in the in the detention world, you know, because we don't have any say on what kid comes in our detention center. You know, if it's a member county, we just take them. You know, if we don't have room, we have to avert them to someplace else. But you know, a lot of times we have sometimes we have adult holes in there, and that's through the the sheriff's department. Well. If we have an adult hold, they are the first ones to get moved because they're not under juvenile court services. And those are the ones that we have the 28E agreement with, with the juvenile court services kids of uh, every county that we have. And that's every detention center. And there, I think there's a couple of detention centers that hold adult holds. We do hold them, but you know, we, we let the, the sheriffs know that, hey, if we get pulled up, we have to call you so you can, so you have to move the kid. Which is a, a bad thing too, because they don't have a place to put them either. So it's just like we have to, we're trying to figure out a better way, but right now there's no answers to what's going on in Iowa, especially when it comes to kids being you know, put in detention and stuff like that. So, so when you say adult hold, that means they're over the age 18? And you're no, no, it means they their their charges were moved to adult court. Oh, I see. So okay. now that they're, they're, they may end up going to jail or something like that, but they're being held in our detention centers. Until yeah. 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 Okay. Because a lot of the jails in Iowa, they have to have they have to be in sight sound separate from other inmates, and most of the jails don't have that. Separate. Set, yeah, to do it. So yeah. they bring them to our, they bring them to the detention centers. Okay. And and some of those kids are the most aggressive kids. You know they are because they don't have anything to lose. Yeah. So you have a lot of trouble with violence. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. And and the reason why we don't is because. We're so small, we give a lot of one on one attention. So we work with the kids one on one all the time. Where the bigger detention centers, they can't do that. You know, because if you got 60, 50, 60 kids, you know, you're pretty much warehousing kids. You know, because you don't have the time to give them one on ones. Now, if they act up, they get the one on one attention. But of course, you know, with any kid, I'm going to act up to get the attention I need. But if you give it to them, when they're doing well, they continue to do well. That's what we do. Do we have issues there? Yeah, we have issues there. Just, you know, just some kids get frustrated. You know, I'll get frustrated if I'm a kid and I'm sitting in detention for, for three or four months and nothing's happened. So we have to work with, we work with that, you know. So um, a lot of mental health is involved in some of our kids. Medication, you know, once a kid comes in detention, 
the insurance shuts off. So a lot of times it gets moved to the county to pay for it. You know, we we can't we've been fighting this for years. It's a federal thing now. So you know when it comes to kids' medications being shut off, we're trying to get it to where you know. And the funny thing is, as soon as they come in here and they got meds, we start calling pharmacies to try to get their meds in before it gets shut off because we know they're going to need it. Yeah. You know, especially when the kid that comes in with with ten med, ten ten psych meds. You know, if you don't give, you don't, you take them off his meds, anything can happen. So, so these are some of the battles that we fight on a daily basis, all day, every day, regarding it. So, but we have a a little commission that all the detention centers get together and we talk about all the issues around the state. So we try to figure out ways to you know help the cause. But you know, when we when we talk to our boards, we need you guys help to make sure that you put the word out when you guys talk to the state and stuff about different things. So. But other than that, like I said, it's we're here for you. As long as I'm the director, like I said, I, I, I've been there 28 years. I probably got about four years left. That's 32 years. That's good enough for me. So, but um, and I'm in the process of trying to put people in place after I leave that will carry on what I what I've helped build and start. You know, because like I said, I've been at this game for so long. It's just I start. The funny thing is, when I first started, I applied at uh, uh, the detention center. They didn't even hire me. Said I had no experience. So I went over to Burnwood, got experience. They called me, wanted me to work. From there, I just went up the ladder, and now I'm in a position to make a, a bigger difference than what I've made. But it's been the easiest job for me. I'm not gonna lie. I love being around the kids. I love working at North Iowa Juvenile Detention Center. It's only job for me. I would never ever take another job. And I've been offered other jobs, but I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. It's just I got that much compassion and belief in what we do at, at that facility. So just want to thank you for your time. I, I got a few questions. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, Absolutely. A couple things. So is there an average stay for a juvenile? I mean, I know that's a rough question, but is it? Is, it you it's mentioned different. three months at one time, or is, is there? It's different. It's different every year. You know, okay. a, a kid that that's there for six months can make the average jump up. You know what I mean? Well, if I had to say an average right now, it would probably be twenty days okay. on the average. No idea. Because we get so many kids that are just sitting there waiting. You know, because there's there's placements. All the placements are pretty much full. So as soon as, as soon as the placement has a, a, a bed open. You got about 10 kids applying for that position. So now the patients are picking and choosing who they want to come there. Okay. So. And then uh, I know we budget so much. I don't remember what the dollar amount is right offhand, but we don't we don't pay anything unless we have a juvenile there. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. So we just budget for a possibility of an amount. Yeah. We don't pay unless someone's there. Yeah. And you know how hard that is for, for North Iowa with the budget? I, I call it a guesstimate. I'm going to guess you're going to have five kids there this year. So, yeah. I, and then if you don't have the five kids now, I'm over. I'm under budgeted. So it's just you, I, I got to do that with all my members. Every member I got to do that with. So it's just I guess, and, it's, and as you can tell, it's probably hard to run a business when you're guessing how much money's going to come in each, each year. So yeah. I'm working with the uh, county social service right now with the mental health aspect of it. You know, we. We used to be at 125, and we raised the rates last year to 175. But you're talking about 125 since 1989. It was probably about time to go ahead and raise the rates, considering what's going on in the world today. So you know, I didn't, I, I didn't want to do it, but I know we have to do it in order to continue to run our detention center and, and provide the services that we need to serve. Uh, Does the 175 cover every aspect that you do, or is there yep. different rates? And so it's 175 no matter what. No matter what. I don't doing. charge for transports from my member counties. We just, your kid needs to go to the placement, we'll take them. If they're in our detention center, we'll take them. We don't charge for um, if a kid is um, over aggressive and, 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 Hard to handle, which are you the same way, whether they're a good kid or a bad kid. I know I, I hear a lot of times that uh, certain detention centers they do charge extra for a kid that has a lot more issues, but we're not we're charging one one fee one fee. All right. So do you, do you have counseling services there for? I have counseling services. I got mental health services. And that's all included in 
that's all included. So if a kid needs a mental health evaluation, I'll tell my nurse or tell my mental health professional, hey, I need we need to do an evaluation. So she'll do an evaluation and get to the PO. All that's all that's included. Except for the meds, one to be friendly, right? Besides the meds, because we have to get some reimbursement. Because as you know, yeah. I've seen meds seven hundred dollars for for thirty days, and that's to me that's ridiculous. You know, but I can't just give up, you know, seven hundred dollars and not expect to get it back. So. Right. Ashley sent out an email recently. Ashley's a social mm -hmm. services. And How are you doing, Ashley? Had, yeah, sorry, All right. Had to do with the juvenile correction officer. Just wondering as far as what we want to do as far as placement for juveniles. And two supervisors replied back, or I was one of them. I'm not sure who the other one was. And I guess the thought between the two of us was we would just have the juvenile correction officer to determine which is the best location for the juvenile to go to. So that's kind of what we're, we're that's what we've been doing that's in the past also. So it's not really a change. But if he's had the juveniles, they've been going to Central Iowa, not us. So have we have we been having some there, there, there been a couple there. Yeah. Um do you know where and Evaluations are they still not available at North Iowa? Yeah, they're not available. It's, it's just because I, like I said last June, I focused on getting Brownstone up and going. Brownstone is the the youth for for the youth and mental health issues. So, and, and yeah. then I lost my uh my program coordinator for the attention. She after 33 years she retired. So I'm in the process of getting another coordinator over there to kind of bring up some of the stuff. You know, and, and a lot of the services it's hard to find. You know, they, so I, I heard that the thirty day evaluation at Central Iowa, they're struggling just to find a service to do it. You know, so you know, it's it's like I would have to like a take somebody and pay them just to come to here this area to do the service for them. Now that's more money coming out of our our budget just to and possibly even move them out here just to just to get them to. You know, come out here and do the service. So, but like I said, we the mental health aspect of it, we 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 got that part. So, if you need a mental health evaluation, we'll do that with no problems. But I got I got eight mental health professionals that come in and assist us with mental health with the adults with the kids and everything. So, I think the one that was at Central they maybe offer like a, like a sexual assault assessment thing mm -hmm. as well over there, um, and a kid only did that. Do they do they charge you extra for it? Um, that one, the JCO was actually able to get the state to cover okay. that, so we did not have to cover that evaluation. But typically, yes, in the past we've gotten a big evaluation bill. Now, if we got the thirty day evaluation, it's just the per diem. We're not charging extra for this, this, this. It's just going to be the per diem. If we can get to that point, you know, like I said, we're fifteen beds compared to fifty beds. So I'm not going to try to compete with it. I'm not, I'm not going to act like I'm going to try to compete with it. So, and I will thank you for putting in the time to discuss those medications while they are still Medicaid approved. Um, we have gotten um, those in the past from detention centers, those big medication bills, and that can really be a big hit to the yeah, budget because yeah. um, that adds up quick. So we appreciate the time you put into trying to get those meds in place before having to turn to the county. Yeah. Like I said, what the bad thing is. But I'm sitting so long, 30 days, and I have to send it to the county. Yeah. So. Any other questions, Ashley? Because this is a good opportunity for you to ask stuff. You're, you're directly involved with this. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I emailed Sam previously and gathered some information. Yeah, um, yeah I, I like the idea of our JCO looking at each individual case and deciding which detention center is going to be the best fit. They know what the kids' needs are, if they're going to need that other evaluation. Um, and I'm pretty confident our JCO is pretty cognizant of the rates as well um, and definitely takes that into account. Yeah, in that one email you said, you did mention that uh, he's fully aware that those rates can go up. An introductory rate can turn into an expensive rate pretty fast. Yes. I'll put it that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he should be the one to decide based off the rates. Right. He should right. Based, based off me. And, I, yes. and I, that's, exactly. that's what he he and that's what he's going to do. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it's yeah. not going to be a rate thing. Okay. But good. He was just aware that that rate thing is is happening. Yeah. Yeah. This is what my point was. So. 
I appreciate everything you do. I understand how tough it is out there. Um, I get to answer the email back, and um, as for me sitting in this chair, I just felt that it should be put into somebody's hands that deal with that, you know, and, you know, so that's why I just kind of went with, um, what was his name again? Matt Martin. Uh, yeah. This year. But, uh, you know, I, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough road out there. Oh, yeah. And I appreciate everything you guys do. And you know, just for me to make any decisions on it, I, uh, I didn't feel I was, you know, knowledgeable enough of which area they should be sent. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the officer. To me, that's the officer's deal. I mean, I'm, I don't want to sit here and just send juveniles based on a rape when, I mean, I'm not assessing the juvenile. I don't know what's going on with that. And it, he's the one that's, and Ashley's the ones that he's dealing with. They're the professionals. And, you know, to me, it's not a rape thing. It's what's best for the juvenile. So. Yeah. And a lot of counties don't have the two options like we do here. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of counties that don't belong with only one, and they don't have an option. You know? so. Do you have any questions for us? I do not. Mr. Horgan. I have a question or a statement, whatever. <clears throat> the state of Iowa sucks at mental health, and they need to step up to the plate. I understand that local governments need to help support, too. And the way you're trying to budget is ridiculous. Probably local governments should have some kind of membership fee they pay to you as long as well as what comes up with each patient that comes to you. We need to pay attention to mental health and local government needs to send that message to the state. Because if we don't speak up, they're not going to help us out. And I hope the state gives you help when they need it. Well, I'm working on it, so <laughs> had a meeting last Friday regarding it, so we'll see. But what we can do at local government might be helpful. Let them know what's going on here. And like I tell, like I tell everybody, we're not out to make millions and millions of dollars off our members, but I want to break even at least. If I break even, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, I'm not looking to make a ton of money off of this. This is this ain't that we're in the wrong business to try to make money like that. You want to do that? You get be the CEO of McDonald's or wherever you keep being CEO of. That. That's not what I. That's not my passion. My passion is with, with working with people that have mental health and working with kids in detention. Been been doing it for years, so not going to change now. Call me stubborn, but I'll be consistent for you. So. Thank you. All right. Are you Thank able you. to keep staff? Pretty, What's that? Are you able to keep staff pretty regularly, or is it tough? I mean, everywhere is tough, isn't it? We do interviews every week. And sometimes we have to take what we can get. And then we find out it don't work out, so then they're gone, then we bring somebody in because we want people to understand what our vision is. Our vision is to, I can find anybody off the street to come in and give kids consequences. I said, that's not what we do here. Yeah, a kid gets a consequence, he earns a consequence. But we're going to work with them until they understand the difference between being successful and not being successful. And we're not supposed to do therapy in detention centers. It's in the cold, but I'm doing therapy. You know, I'm helping kids out as much as I can because I, I don't want to. I don't want to see them in the in the police law being arrested at age 19 and spending the rest of their life in jail. You know, I don't want to see that. Have I seen it? Yeah, I've seen it before. And we were on the way up here. We we're talking about one of the kids that. He loved me to death, but I couldn't get him to stop stopping his ways. At age 12, he was six foot tall. By the time he was a man, he was six nine, and he he was up in prison in in Alaska, you know, because when he was in prison in Anamosa, he was telling people. So that's just like, but I know now if we had mental health back then with kids, it may have changed his life back then. I mean, because he. If we didn't have that option back then, but now, now the state does, so let's improve on it. Bring an employee with you? Yep. This is uh, 
Mark Crawford, he's um, one of my um, supervisors that's, that's probably applying for the, the coordinator job. So I wanted him to kind of get a taste of what the whole business was about when it comes to talking to the board of supervisors and stuff like that. So he's just taking it in. So this is first one. So yeah, I'm very familiar with everything that's going on, though. So yeah. Everything he's talking about, I'm already. I already know about it. Yeah, we 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 meet every day with all my management team. We meet all the time. And we talk about this stuff and what we can do different, and you know, try to bring in revenue, try to keep everybody you know happy and moving forward and our clients as well. So, yes, you might have a weight room there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because that's the big joke with Mark. Yeah, everybody talks about Mark working on it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a part of me. I do it on a day to day basis. Four o'clock in the morning every single day. So, but when you when you when you have that kid that's completely tearing up your place, easy yeah. to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> like for a time out. Yeah. You have him on speed dial. Yeah. yeah. I actually I do. So, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Meetings attended. Um, I had a NICOG executive board meeting. Um, a couple of the biggest items, I guess, is they're having uh, moisture problems inside their building. Mark, remember on the Secondary Roads building, how we constantly had that water issue with the ceiling or whatever. They had the same thing going on there. So they're going to uh, um, fix it. They're going to work on to fixing that. And then they're going to, I should say they, we, some part of that, we're going to join into the uh, city of Mason City's healthcare plan. And it was beneficial for them also because if they could reach the 250 member mark, it ended up lowering their rates also. So they reached out to NICOG to see if NICOG wanted to do this. NICOG didn't want to do this. They were going to look for somebody else. So it's something the city wanted to do. And uh, so this will in turn improve NICOG's uh, deductibles and out of pockets and rate structure. It's going to be a, it's going to be win-win for both entities. So that's going to be happening. And then I had a somewhere in here. I had a North Iowa soil and water, or not North Iowa, which county soil and water conservation district meeting. And uh, Jackie attended the Capitol Day at the Capitol, and they discussed uh, water, watershed management areas. And there's a House Bill 678 that removes water quality from watershed management areas, which just seems kind of bizarre because that's what they originally were founded on. But uh, there's little support with it. Um, and they're, the message that they kept trying to portray there was uh, state funding needs to happen to hire full time watershed management area coordinators. Um, Devin attended the soil health event at the Dean's Bonheim cover crop seminar and uh, discussed federal and state cost share programs. There are about 100, 150 farmers attended. It was good interest. Um, uh, Devin is also working with the layer map in order to, and this has to do with Amanda also, that's what the spreadsheet was, she was talking about and what watershed does as far as water sampling that they do this layer map will put in all these locations and then uh, he can shade an area as far as if an area in the county is uh, having problems areas are good uh, and that way it's going to be a little more accessible for people that are requesting information to see that uh, yeah, this is a problem spot we're doing really good here it's not going to work it's taking place. It's not like it's completed yet, but that's the direction where he's going to go. And then the last thing was uh, he was at another seminar. I don't remember. I can't remember where that was at. 
a lot of this information comes across kind of fast, and I can't really go down that fast. But um, had to do with using oats as a cover crop, and I guess there were a lot of. I'm not a farmer, so I'm not super knowledgeable in, in farming practices. I'll just admit that. But at one time, there was a lot of oats that were uh, grown in this area. And there's a farmer that's west of 35, and he started with 100 acres of oats. And now he's putting in over 6,000 acres of oats. And the uh, the three places, large facilities in this area are Cedar Rapids, Albert Lee, and St. Ansgar, as far as for oats. And uh, St. Ansgar has all of their oats, like I said, all of their oats shipped down from Canada. Nothing, none, none of it is local. And a lot of the problem is that uh, you can't get the test weight up. Well, this farmer west of 35, he, he said an old trick is what you, uh, he called it agitating the oats. And there are different ways you can agitate it. One of it is also when you actually load it into a truck or a bin that um, you have it so that it drops further and you get that husk to come off of the oat, and then that ends up uh, making your test weight better. Um, if you took a bunch of oats to, to St. Ansgar and wanted them to purchase it, and then the test weight isn't where they need to have it, well, then they're just going to reject it. So that dissuades a lot of people from doing oats because they don't have a market to get rid of it. So if, if we can increase this, the test weight better, what they are saying is we could actually use oats as cover crops, and we have three facilities, Cedar Rapids, Albert Lee, and St. Ansgar, that could actually utilize them rather than bringing stuff from Canada down here. So that was discussion. I think rain has something to do with that way too. You get dry. Okay. One of our heat. Heat. And now, which is really hot, you know, because that's the fell out. That's why it's cooler in Canada. Right? Yeah. Okay. All the time. Okay. But, yeah, but, but that other method probably helps too, I'm sure. Yeah, but that guy said that's a trick that, and I guess, uh, Noros did that also. St. Ansgar did that also, where, where uh, they were doing that themselves when they had some oats that didn't make it. They would, so, so they said it's just kind of a trick that can be used. Yeah. But and again, I'm not I'm not a farming expert. I live in the yeah. farming community, but there's people who know a lot more about farming than I do. But that's kind of the gist of it. So. Yeah. Oh, what they're talking about. They're also looking for the size of the growth. Okay. So if you remove the hull and put more smaller growths together, that's not going to give them the flake they want. Okay. And there's more to it than just what it makes. They get 40 pound oats in, 42 pound oats, so that they can get that big growth for growing. Okay. There are, there are certain other things that they're going to look at and say what it weighs. And they know if the hull's on it or not when they feed it. So. Okay. That's all I had. Sydney Secretary of the Landfill Meeting. Anyway. Oh, and she's not going to talk? Uh, said there was nothing really important, but she just want to make sure there's oh, landfill. Okay, I had the Conservation Board meeting that Mike went over that pretty much, so, and then I was invited to this Land and Liberty Coalition. It was a for wind energy development. It's not a wind energy company, it's just coalition through the state of Iowa. They had a seminary building that they just talked about. The good things about wind and solar and have setbacks for different counties and stuff. And it's a lot of a lot of good information, I think, for just in general. So that was it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had a Iowa workforce, and you had one thing on the agenda they used back to privatize the portion of the Iowa workforce, and it, uh, this company that they had isn't going very well, so they're going to uh, break it off, break ties with them, and then put it out for bid for another uh, company to come in and take it over. So 
not really working the way that Iowa, state of Iowa wanted them to go. So, but they're not losing any services that the other people in the office are stepping up there. Okay. Go ahead, none. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No one other questions this week? No. Okay. All righty, adjourn the meeting at 9.24. Oh, excuse me. Any uh, public comments? Uh, you already have said enough? <laughs> Save some for next week? Yeah. <laughs> right. Meeting adjourned at 9.24. <laughs>